Holy Spirit, we thank you for what you're doing, what you're about to do, and all that you've already done in our lives. We're saying thank you. We're grateful for our salvation, grateful for our health and our sound mind, Lord. We declare that we have the mind of Christ. We say that we have the spirit of the living God living within us. So we thank you for the wisdom, the understanding, the righteousness, and the under, uh, justice of your word that lives within us, Lord. I pray right now that you would open up the eyes of our heart to the salvation of Christ. That we, Father, we would recognize that you're speaking to me, to us. That you're speaking to us as an individual and then as a group, as men of the higher standard. I thank you for the blessing, Father, of every man here, of their family that's represented because they represented themselves here today, Lord, in your presence. I thank you for their lives, Lord. I thank you that they're understanding the, the simple word of God, the practical word of God, and they're applying this to their lives. They're not just being hearers, Lord, but they're being doers, Lord. They're going to do what you ask of them. And sometimes... We'll do what you command of us, Lord God. We're your servants. We're your sons, Lord God. So we're asking, bless us. Bless us like never before, Lord God. We want a blessing. We're asking for a blessing of wisdom and understanding. Lord, I thank you for the worship team, for the media and sound team that is here, Lord, the ushers. I thank you for... All the ministers that are here today, Lord God, I pray that these men would not be ashamed of the gospel, that they would go out, Father, and be bold, courageous, Lord, and share the gospel wherever they go, wherever they go. Father, they'll have a smile and someone will look at them, why are you smiling? Because Jesus lives inside of me. I'm a believer. I believe in Jesus Christ. So we love you, Lord. We love you, Father. We, we just surrender right now, Lord. We surrender our spirits, our souls, and our bodies to you, Lord. Have your way. Have your say, Lord, right now. In Jesus' name. And every man said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We are men of victory, men of valor. Thank you, Jesus. He's so good. He's so wonderful. Let's give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Supernatural, 
supernatural God, supernatural, supernatural, supernatural. came to earth, to him who came to earth and died, be all the blessings, all the honor, to him who rose and is alive, be all the glory, all the power, to him who broke the chains of sin, be all the blessings, all the honor, to him who's coming back again, be all the glory, you've never been, you've never been. Are a supernatural, supernatural God, supernatural, 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 supernatural God, supernatural, supernatural. supernatural. Him who turned the water into wine, Him who turned water into wine. Be all the blessings, all the honor to Him who gave sight to the blind. Be all the glory, all the honor to Him. Today, today, the same, now and forever. You've never been, you've never been defeated. You've never lost a battle. For you all things are possible. For you are supernatural, supernatural God, supernatural, 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 supernatural. Unstoppable, unshakable, supernatural God, omnipotent, preeminent, magnificent, supernatural God, miraculous, victorious, so glorious, supernatural God, eternal, immortal, unchangeable, supernatural God, unchangeable.
What do I look like? What do I look like? What do you see? What are the things that you are dreaming about? The visions of glory I'm starting to see. Lord, let the things you dream become reality. I won't settle. I won't settle. I won't settle. I won't settle. I won't settle for anything less. I will hold on. We will hold on. I will hold on. What do I look like? What do I look like? What do you see? What are the things that you are? Yeah. 
lift your hands, man. Lift your hands. Mark me as yours. you and how can we describe you when there is no one like you the God who was and is and is to come we marvel at your wisdom beyond our comprehension so powerful measure. Your worth is beyond measure. You made us for your pleasure. To glorify your name in all the earth. You will be. You will be exalted. And every knee will bow and worship. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Matchless, victorious, wonderful and glorious, beautiful and marvelous. You are, you are passionate and full of love, faithful and awesome one, excellent, eternal God. You are. Redeemer, 
Jesus, there is 
No one like you, my Father. We're drawing close to you as you instructed us, Father. To draw close to you and you will draw close to us. We draw close to you in our worship and our praise, Lord. In our love, heart to heart, Lord. Heart to heart. We want to know who you are, Lord, more and more every day. We want to draw closer and closer every day. We thank you, Father, as you draw us close to you, Lord. Every breath we take, Father, every word that we speak, every thought that we have, Lord, that we would draw close to you. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our souls, to our minds, our emotions, our will, our thoughts, Lord. Examine us, Lord. Examine our hearts, our motives, our minds. That we would draw closer and closer, Lord. That's our heart's desire to worship you, to bless you, to know you, Lord. We know you're real, Lord. 
we know you exist and who you are, Father, and we just want to know you more, more and more every day, Lord. We need you. We need you in our lives, Lord. We have to have you in our lives, Lord. Touch us. Touch our lives. You know where we need to touch, Father. In our hearts, our souls, in our finances, in our marriages, Lord. In ourselves, Lord, within ourselves, Lord. You know exactly who we are. Touch us. Jesus, we need a touch. We want to know you and your love, Lord. For we know that it's your love that, mo that covered a multitude of our sin, Lord. It's your love that has set us free. We've been liberated, Lord. we can say is yes Lord yes Lord how awesome you are how beautiful you are holy and sovereign is the God that we serve and we know closer 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 and closer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wonderful you are. Amazing. Your grace is so amazing toward us, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Where would we be that be without your grace? Thank you for loving us. You guys go ahead and have a seat in the presence of our Father. I shared that some of the men in our church that I would I was asking God for his presence in my time of worship. I would always ask him, you know, Father, I want to know you in your presence. I want to be healed in your presence. I want to hear your voice in your presence. And he says, what about the power of my presence? that we would know him in the power of his presence. There's a freedom there. There's a liberty. We don't have to be that old man no more. We don't have to be ashamed of what we were and the things we did any longer because of his grace. And if we are operating in sin, ask God for forgiveness. Forgive me, Father, for I've sinned. Like King David said, right? And only in front of you have I done this sin. God knows. And he's not here to condemn us. No. He 
He's here to fulfill his word in us. We are all miracles. Every one of you back here are miracles. We're better than what we used to be, right? Whole different people now. And let God finish this work, the good work he begun in every one of us. Let him finish that work until the day of Jesus Christ. But you have to give him permission. Finish the work, Lord. I want to finish my race. I want to stay on that lane, that path, that narrow path. I don't want to race on that uh, wide lane or path. I want to stay in the race with you, Lord. And he'll be your victory like he is right now. He's your victory. He's your salvation. He's your redemption. Amen. He's your thoughts. That's how he consumes us so much. That you wake up, you got God on your mind. That's mind-blowing, isn't it? For a human being. Imagine what angels do, because angels worship him 24-7. They don't even know the time. They just, they worship God all the time. And when they see you worshiping God on your own, no one is telling you, no one is coaching you. Just coming from your heart, I love you, Lord. I just want to say thank you today. I'm grateful for what you've done. Because a lot of us know where we could have been. I think every one of us could know where we could have been. But God jumped in front of the enemy and said, no, this is mine. Chosen. Chosen to serve God. Whoever thought that, huh, Jerry, that you would serve God? Whoever thought that? Only God. So I want to encourage you guys. Tap closer to God. Get closer to God. Seek him. While he can be found, seek him. If you need answers, ask him. He's not too far that he won't answer you. The kingdom of God lives in us. His wisdom is inside of you. The answers are already inside of you, but you got to ask. And he's not going to withhold anything from the righteous. Right, Pastor Eric? He's not going to withhold anything. He's going to give you the answers to your lives. And that's how we'll get better. We'll get healthier. As we have that relationship, as we engage with him, as we connect with God, he'll give you the desires of your heart ever. You think your dad has uh, desires for you? God has way more desires for your life. I know that man loves you with his life, but Jesus gave his life for you. And for every one of us here, he gave his life. He said, you're worth it. People say you're not worth it, but Jesus says, you're worth it. I'm, you're worthy to die for me. I'm going to give my life for you. I'm going to exchange my life for you. You're worth it, Ted. You're worth it, Danny. Tony, you're worth it. Anthony, it's, you're worth it, my brother. The enemy tries to steal that from us. Your worth. It's greater than gold. It's greater than silver, brass, or rubies. Your salvation that was paid by the blood of Christ, the precious blood of Christ. He was willing to do that, and he did it. Not only was he willing, he was doing it, and he did it. And now it's our turn to do it, to be living sacrifices unto God. As you guys are today, you guys came. Could have been at home watching some football games, right, doing some yard work or catching up on some work during the week and all that. Right? We had all kinds of excuses, right? But we overcame those. Now, Tony, you're here. I could have did this. I could have done that. I should have been doing that. But you said, you know what? God is worth it for me to come. So 
Let him speak to you today. Open your hearts and say, Lord, speak to me. I want to hear your voice. I need to hear your voice. It's not over for one of you guys here. It's not over. I want you to know that. When I was worshiping God, that's what I was getting. Tell him it's not over. It's not done. You're not finished. It is not over. Until we see him face to face. And we're not even remember that it finished. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's give the worship team a good round of applause and cry. Say amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, men. Thank you. Man, you, you guys are getting better too, man. You guys are all as one now, man. Wait till you get to the mountain, boy. I remember one time when we were there in the mountain and some of us were still in the cafeteria. We're eating, right? And uh, the men were on fire, excited, excited. It was Saturday night. These guys started worshiping God like 15 minutes before 7 o'clock. It's 6.45, and these dudes are already full-blown, boom. Man, I walked in that room, my skin, my hair went, whoosh, I'm like, my God. You can just sense the power of God in this place, in this room. So if you guys aren't, haven't signed up for the mountain, uh, Andy, is there still time for them to sign up? They won't get a T-shirt, but they'll sign up, right? You can buy a T-shirt there, though, because we ordered so many T-shirts. So that's what we did. Then we just ordered some extra ones to sell because, we, you know, our ministries in our, in our church have to take care of themselves. And that's how we believe, you know, by... You know, by the grace of God, but it's up to us to give unto the Lord, you know. So uh, if you guys haven't signed up, it's not too late. We still got two weeks to go. It's on the 15th, 16th, and 17th. 200 bucks. Talking to people at the football game last night I went to, and they were saying, man, we spent 100 bucks in eating on a weekend. I'm like, wow, we. That's a lot. You got four or five kids, right, Thomas? When you take them out, that's what it is, right? Over 100 bucks, you know? So a regular lunch now is, thank you, sir, it's 20 bucks. We used to get a burrito, fries, and soda pop for seven bucks, 550, just four or five years ago, right? And now they're 15 bucks just for the burrito itself. You ain't getting no fries. You ain't getting no drink either. Drinks are like four or five bucks. And I said, I'll take some water, you know? <laughs> Some water, some lemons, and some sugar, please. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Hallelujah. If you guys would open up your Bibles to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 12. 1 Timothy 4, 6 through 12. I'm talking about engaging with God but it's going to take a devotion. You got to devote yourself unto God. God must become your life. Yeah. It'll start, he'll start with some of your life, right? And then all of a sudden you're going to hear God within yourself say, I am your life. He told me that one time. And I would say, Father, you're my faith, you're my strength. You're the invisible God, the only true living God. And he says, angel, I'm your life. And that's what we have to get as men. And I haven't arrived. Don't think pastor arrived. Long, 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 long way to go. Right? Long way to go to get where God wants to take us. And when we get there, he's still going to blow our minds. Right? Tony, Eric, Andy, right? When we get there, he's going to blow our minds. You're going to see so many colors you never saw before. You're going to see people so beautiful, and you're going to see these uh, seasoned men, Jared, that you didn't see them when they were 30 and 32 years old. They were full of life, right? Prime and everything, you know? And you guys, you know, you get like, I can only imagine how Pastor Eric looked at 32 years old. 
how Tony looked at 32, how Pastor Angel looked at 32, how Andy looked at 32, how Tony looked when he was 32. It blows your mind when you see photos like that. I'm like, wow, wait, my hair was all black. <laughs> right? I was in shape then, you know. But that's how God sees us. He sees you complete. He sees you full, full of life, full of love, full of forgiveness, full of joy, full of life. That's how God sees you, and that's how he celebrates you. If we would just learn how to celebrate him and celebrate the life as we engage with God, as we devote our lives unto the Lord, he's going to change you. He's going to make you the man that you desire. Because all of us have a desire. We want to do something for God, right? And he wants you to do that for him. Every one of us has a task. Every one of us has a, a, an assignment. Every one of us. It may not be my assignment, but you have an assignment. Everyone does. And you got to find out what that is. You got to ask. You receive not because you... Ask not. You have not asked them, what's my purpose in life? What is your will for my life? I want your will to be done, not my will to be done. And he's going to blow your mind when he takes you on that trip and you say yes. You're like, wow. Never did I think I would be on this path I'm on now. Never. That never came out of my mouth when I was out there in the world. Never did I think I would be doing what I'm doing. Never did I think I would be a Christian. You know what my slogan was? I'm ahead till I'm dead. That's what I used to say. I'm ahead till I'm dead, but no longer. We're alive. We've engaged with God. I told Andy and them that I sure we're talking, right? The word. He, what's the word, Pastor? I said, God said we're going to engage. We're going to engage with him. It's not just going to be a connection. We're going to begin to flow with him. We'll begin to think like he thinks and speak like he thinks and live like he thinks. I know some of you guys say, that's impossible. What seems impossible to man is not impossible for God. And some of you have already tapped in. You're engaging. And now you're about to, you're about to wrestle, baby, to get where God wants you to go. I had a little friend that wrestled at 105 when I was in high school, and he had these little moves, little skinny old doo doo. Yeah, he was like, oh yeah. He was our league champ at 105 pounds, you know? And he walked around like he was weighing 200 pounds. His, his uh, Letterman jersey uh, jacket was all baggy, <laughs> but, you know, he had like three champions of, of uh, league and all this stuff. And he walked around like that. And that's how we have to be. I'm not saying arrogant. I'm not saying cocky or anything like that of that nature. Is, is that a bad word to say cocky in here? Is it? No? Okay. I just, you know, because some people get at me. Uh, but we're, we're to have some confidence in him and what he's done in us. That's why I say, you know, that, that phone what does it do? Got your head down. Not looking at anything that's working, that's happening around your life. Takes all your attention. Takes all your focus. All your emotions. Kids are walking across the street without even looking to the left or right. And their lives are being taken. Because they're not paying attention. And we spiritually... Spiritually, learn, have to learn how to pay attention to what the Spirit of God is saying. You don't have to walk around with your head down no longer. I'm not saying you have to walk around with your nose all up high. Even keel, right? You know who you are. And no one can steal that from you. I care what your coach says. I care what your mom says, your daddy says. You know who you are in Christ. I'm a Christian, and I'm going to live this way. 
My chin's going to be even. I'm not going to look down. I'm not going to look up to nobody. I'm going to look to people eye to eye. Tony, you're old school. My father, he always used to tell me, ojo a ojo, eye to eye. He would say in Spanish, look at me eye to eye when you speak to me, boy. Because he didn't, he, he didn't want to hear you, see you lying. Because if you start looking to the side, you're lying. Because you can't look at me eye to eye. And I do that. I don't tell you guys that, but I look at you. See if you guys look at me eye to eye. But you guys start going, I'm like, okay. You know, I know that's not all, you know, 100%, but a lot of times, you know, people can read body, right? They can read your body, your actions. And that's why we have to learn how to be, have our face like flint, right? So here Paul, the Apostle Paul is speaking to Timothy. But I want to read these little two notes, their paragraphs, two paragraphs I wrote. This year's theme for our men's conference is engage. A man that seeks God, that seeks his presence, his wisdom, his forgiveness, his love. A godly man is one that puts emphasis on his own integrity. No one has to tell you that not to lie or cheat or that your eyes wonder and stuff like that, you, you have to have integrity. You don't have to lie to kick it, like they say. You know, you don't have to do that. You be a person of integrity, a person of honor. You conduct yourself like a man. That's how we're to live our lives. We're called men of a higher standard. Speaking to that lady yesterday, and that's what she was saying. Oh, do you guys have ministries for here and for that? I go, we do. I go, not as big as the churches you, you go to. Because she goes, I go to different churches where I can hear what the pastors have to say. She wants to catch them in certain things. You know, and I'm like, it doesn't operate like that. It doesn't work like that. I say, you walk in with a negative mindset as soon as you walk in here. You're looking to see if the brother has a booger in his nose or, you know, something in his eyeball. I say, you're looking for the littlest things, and you're distracted by not even hearing the gospel of Christ. The good news. I said, but I'm going to preach to you today, sister. And she was a sister. Yeah. And I began, I said, and I'm going to share the wisdom of God with you. And she's like, wow. She's an intelligent person. I'm not in that sense of what they know. And she had a degree in psychology, you know. So, you know, trying to catch you in your little words and every, you know. I don't think you pronounced that correctly. I said, it don't matter. You know what I say, girl. <laughs> I said, you know what I'm talking about. You're a sister. You know what I'm talking about. We come from the same neighborhood. She just starts laughing. She says, oh, my God, you're crazy. I said, no, I'm not. I'm not crazy. I'm talking to you about Jesus Christ. I said, don't come around here like because you know you got something on your wall that you're somebody. We're not. We're in Christ. Everything that we are. Every breath we take, every thought we have, when we're in Christ, is because of him. The talent you have is because of Christ. Because that can be taken away just like that, you know. Because I was just like you. I was a star player. And they broke my leg in four places. And from there, my life started changing a bit. But we have to just keep on keeping on. Amen. So a man that seeks God, his presence, his wisdom, forgiveness, love, is a godly man, one that puts an emphasis on his own integrity. He strives to be honest and just. He works to develop a strong ethic foundation. We have to build our, our ethics, our morals, our lives upon the foundation of this word. Man of God has an understanding of godly behavior. You know how you should be living. No one has to tell you how to live. You have the word of God, the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you to teach you and to guide you. Some of you should already be teaching other young men, our teenagers, our young 20-year-olds that are here. You're 47 years old. You got 20 years on them. You got 20 years of experience, 20 years of wisdom on people. You guys got 40 years. I got 40 years on a lot of these kids. And I call them young men because you guys are young to me. If you're in your 40s, you're still young. You're full of life. Don't let the enemy lie to you. You know, I'm, I'm 42. I'm old. 
I'll, I'll change uh, ages anytime, my brother. <laughs> Amen? But it doesn't happen like that. So the man of God has an understanding of the glory and, uh, of a godly behavior, excuse me. And his heart is to please God and to live for God. A godly man has good character and a clean conscience. That's why, don't lie, because if you lie, you got to remember what you said yesterday in front of certain people. you got to be sitting there remembering. That's a battle. What did I say? How did I say that? I remember, try to remember exactly what. No, when you're speaking the truth, you're going to hear the same stories over and over. Amen? Because you have the same stories, too, over and over. And people say, well, you already told me that story. But maybe you needed to hear it, or maybe the person next to you needed to hear it. He's engaged. This man is already engaged with God. He's connected to God and God's spirit. God leads him. God directs his steps. The steps of a righteous man are ordered of God. He's already, he, he's already been in your future, Tomas. He knows where you're going. All we got to do is follow instruction and not do it our way. Let's do it your way, Lord. It's hard. I've been a pastor for 21 years now. It's not an easy thing, but it's a good life. You got to follow instruction. Sometimes you don't want to do it. You fight. You battle within yourself. No quiero. Mm -mm, I don't want to do that. You sit there and be quiet, and God will say, it'll be good for you. I'll reward you for your faith, for your steadfastness. I'm in a battle right now, too, in my life. And he just told me, hold on, it's coming. The reward's coming. Just wait, angel. Because there's times, yeah. Today, I'm brushing my teeth. Oh, Pastor Joe could preach today. Andy could do a good job. Domas is coming up. Yeah, yeah. They could do this. I could just stay home and watch a college football game. My team is going to be on playing. All that stuff goes through your mind. I'm not lying to you guys. But I said, nah, Lord, I'm following you. I'm going to do what you say to do. I'm coming. I'm coming no matter what. If there's three of us, if there's five of us, if there's 20, 30 of us, I'm coming. We're always waiting for somebody else. Did somebody else go? Did so-and-so go? Did so Don't worry about somebody. You go. You come. Amen. Amen? And there's an invite. Amen? There's a power of invite. We got that. We learned that, right? If you just invite somebody. If they say no, they say no. But how about if they said yes? Someone that has told you no 20 times. And all of a sudden you say, want to go to have some breakfast? That's on me. That's the tack I got for my brothers. I used to tell that to my brothers. They were lost. All my brothers are saved. So you want to go eat a steak? It's on me. And we come to church and my little brother Fred were like, oh, we're going to church. I said, I'm going to buy you a steak, brother. First we're going to go to church. I'm not going to lie to you. I told you I was going to buy you a steak. I didn't tell you when I was going to buy you a steak. <laughs> and you buy him the steak. That way you keep your word. And they believe you. And all of a sudden, he just walked from the back, walked to the front, and gave himself to the Lord. And I was sitting over here, and he was sitting over there. All of a sudden, I see my little brother coming up here crying and crying and throwing his hands up in the air to God. I'm like, what kind of reward is that, man? <laughs> what can compare to that? That your son, your cousin, your brother, your uncle, a friend, a co-worker come and gives himself to the Lord. That's a reward. It ain't a big old ring. It ain't this little jewelry you have. They gave me a jacket. What's that jacket? <laughs> You'll lose it anyway. I bought a nice Dodger silk uh, 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 jacket. I don't know where I left it. It's gone. <laughs> you don't have it? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> no, you know, and you just leave it somewhere. You forget and just someone scored. Amen? 
Scriptures reveal God's deep desires to be in fellowship with us. That's God's desire, to fellowship with us. And he gives us a hunger, a hunger in our human souls for a relationship with him. More than anything, he wants a relationship with you. He wants to talk with you. He wants you to talk with him. Sometimes you don't read your Bible every day. There's times that you don't go into a deep prayer, but you have your mind on Christ, and you know that the relationship is still there. He doesn't say, oh, you didn't read today, so you know what? Today we're not speaking to each other. God doesn't do that. God draws close to us, and then we draw close to him. So he says, hey, Al, what's going on? How's your day coming along? You're like, oh, yeah, Father, thank you. I bless you for reminding me that I do worship you. I do honor you no matter what's going on. And this is how we have to be. We're connected. We're engaged with God. God will always take, I just said this, God will always take the initiative by his grace. And by his grace, he draws us and he seeks us into a personal relationship. God wants the one-on-one. I love the one-on-ones with men. I do. I love the one-on-ones. Those are the rich. Those are the deep ones. Because he doesn't, when you're speaking to somebody one-on-one, you don't have to put a front on in front of your wife. You don't have to put a front in front of the brothers. It's just you and me speaking heart to heart, mind to mind, man to man. And you tell me your, your hang-ups and your sin, because I'm not going to sit here and judge you. We're going to get over that. We're going to give each other wisdom. Iron is going to sharpen iron. Some of you guys don't like to hang around with pastor because mm, he's going to sharpen us. And that's what we're supposed to be as men of God. We're to sharpen my brother. I'm to get the best out of you, brother, and you're to get the best out of me. Forget about who we are and what we're. No, I want, to, I want more. Yeah. I spent a weekend with my pastor. Uh, I was there on uh, with him uh, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, eating breakfast last day with Pastor Art Aragon. I went to uh, Alaska with him. It was rich, very rich, getting one-on-one with him, laughing. And, you know, I, you know, I have my little corny jokes, my little dry jokes, you know, Eric, you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> and, and he just, he, you know, he punched me in the arm, not hard, he just, you know, a little pow, he goes, Angel, I like to have fun, too. I said, okay, then we'll laugh. I'm over here trying to be Mr. Serious and Mr., you know. Yeah. Yes, pastor, no, pastor, you know, this and that. And he's like, relax. You can be who you, can, who you are, angel. I like to have fun. I said, all right, right on, we'll have fun. You know? And we did. We had fun. You know, he did something that he didn't even realize what he, what he did, you know, in the airplane. And uh, we bought two, I bought two, air, I bought two cheer, cheese uh, burgers and uh, two hamburgers. He wanted two hamburgers. I wanted two cheeseburgers in the morning before we left on the flight. And he went to go get water, right? So then we, go, we have to go right, they go, we have to uh, go load, you know, lo- get into the uh, airplane. We go in. I have to use the restroom right away. So I go to the back to use the restroom. He's in the front part of the restaurant. I'm in the airplane. I'm in the back because I bought my ticket like a week after him, and I didn't want to pay. I ain't gonna pay no <laughs> for first class. I go, I ain't paying that amount of money, my brother. I said, that's a lot of money, man. I said, and the church is gonna help me out. <laughs> Amen. Praise the <laughs> Lord. <laughs> you know, so I, I went to the premium. Premium. You know, it's right behind the first class, the, the premium seating there, but. I go to the restroom and, you know, I put the hamburgers and cheeseburgers on my chair and I come back, it's open. The bag's open. I'm like, what the heck? And I look around and I said, dang, someone took the cheeseburgers. I said, I'm, yeah, and I said, oh, no, you know, the spirit quickens you. Pastor Art has them. So I go over there and, yeah, he's sitting down there and he's eating things. <laughs> And I, and I, you know, I go right up to him. He sees me. I said, how's my cheeseburgers? He goes, oh, my God, I'm eating the cheeseburgers. He goes, 
I wanted the hamburgers. I go, okay, I'll have a hamburger. Don't worry about it. He goes, no, Angel, here, give us. And I'm like, keep it. It's not worth, you know, I go, we're just having a good time, you know. But now, you know, I was calling the hamburger. The, with the guy that used to steal the hamburgers, what's his name? Hamburgerler. Yeah, I, I go, you're the hamburgerler. I said, you stole my hamburgers. He's like, oh, my God. But you're, I was having, an, I haven't had, had a relationship with him for 20 years. You know, uh, we knew each other 21 years ago. I would see him in conferences, and I'd go up and shake his hand just out of respect and honor for who he was, you know. But I didn't have a conversation with him or nothing there, you know. How you doing, buddy? He called me buddy, and I never liked him calling me buddy. I would always say, Angel Baruch is my name. Hey, buddy, Angel Baruch is my name. Angel Baruch is my name. I must have said it about 20 times to him. And then finally one day he says, good morning, Angel Baruch. I'm like, thank you, sir. I said, because I'm old school. My father taught me that, right? You say your first and your last name when you introduce yourself to someone, right? Things like that. So just having a relationship was good, and that's what God wants to do with us. This engagement of God and man brings us to what? To an understanding of what he requires of us, to know him, to rely on him, to trust him. And put our confidence in him and, and his word. Lean not to your own understanding, but with all your heart, trust in God. And he's going to direct your steps. That's the engagement. That's walking with him. Knowing him. You know what your father's going to say because you read the Bible. You've had a conversation with him. People tell me, oh, God works in mysterious ways. No, he does not. You were taught that. I wasn't taught that way. God works in amazing ways. If you read your Bible, in the Old Testament, it was mysterious because he only showed himself to certain people. Even in the New Testament, until they, they got the revelation that it was no longer a mystery no more to know God, to walk with God, to know his plans and its truths for our lives. It's no longer a ministry, a mystery for us. It's awesome. When he speaks to you and the revelation comes, right? Rhema comes to you. Boom. Light bulbs oh, on. Like, oh, my God. Now I understand what he's saying. I'm receiving that. Can I get an amen? amen? To know him, to rely on him, to trust him, to put our confidence in him and his word and his spirit. And his spirit leading us as a father a natural father leads his children. If you're a godly father, if you have people that are under you, you're going to lead them in the right way of the Lord, in the truth. Amen. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And there's no other way amen. but through Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? amen? And that takes to be engaged. And here, let's read it now. From 4 to, to 12. 4 to 16, I'm sorry, 4 to 16. If you instruct, he's, he's speaking to Timothy now. This is the apostle speaking to Timothy. Timothy's a, a young pastor, a young leader. And apostle, uh, the apostle Paul is dropping things in him. He's depositing wisdom, knowledge, truth, righteousness in him. Just like I am right now. I'm imparting into your lives. Just receive it. He says, if you instruct the brothers in these things, you will be a good minister from, from one to five. He, he says, if you instruct them in these things, you'll be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the word, the words of faith, and of good doctrine, which you have carefully followed. You have to follow the instructions, the word of God. You can't just be a hearer of the word. You have to be a doer of the word. There's people that say they have wisdom, but they don't walk in wisdom. They don't walk in the truth. They walk the way they want to walk, and God's grace is sufficient. God will cover me. Well, that's your disobedience, and you're just trying to make an excuse of it. And we're not to do that. We're to follow God 
with all our strength, with all our mind. Amen? That's what we're to do. And I hope that we have many examples here. You have your son right there. You have a, an assignment right there, your children. Every one of us has an assignment. If you have a wife, you know, you can't preach to her, but you got to use, you got to be tactful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got to be tactful how you speak to her. Because if you don't, she Because she's watching your life and your life is not lining up to the word of God. So she don't want to hear you until you begin to line up to the word of God. And I know that's a tough word. That's a rough word for some of us. I am nice to her. When you want to be nice, are you just nice to her like Christ is? Isn't Christ nice to us all the time? Even when he corrects us, even when he rebukes us, we still feel his love. Like, dang, I got rebuked by God. But it was good that I suffered. Because we got better in it. He says, of good uh, doctrine, which you have carefully followed. But reject profane and old wife fables and exercise yourself toward godly, uh, godliness. We're to live godly lives, not making excuses. We should have reasons to live for God and not make excuses for not living for God. And you know, amen's right there. For boldly exercise prophets a little. You can exercise all you want. That offers, that, that, that uh, profits you a little bit. It's good. Don't tell, I mean, don't say, oh, pastor said I don't have to exercise. No, exercise. But don't make that the focus of your life. Amen? But godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that is now, that now is, and that of which is to come. He's talking about spiritual life. When we take our last breath, Jesus is my Lord. I'm ready, Father. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. For to this end, we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in a living God who is the Savior of all men, especially for those who believe, especially for those who believe, especially for those who believe, especially for those who who believe. There's people that say they believe, but their actions don't line up. It's us who believe and we live it. That it works. That the word of God works within our hearts, within our minds, within our thoughts, within our emotions. A lot of us were angry men. Full of rage. Now you got that under Control. God, God showed you how to do that, Amen. how to overcome that stuff. Amen. Amen. Now we can laugh when they cut us in front of us, you know, in traffic. We ain't giving them number one. We're not chasing them down and stuff like that any longer. I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay. I, lo I lost 10 seconds, you know, of my time. You didn't lose it. You'll get it. You'll pass them up sooner or later. I know you will anyway. <laughs> Let me read 10 again. He says, for this is the end. We both labor and suffer reproach. And because we trust in the living God, we have to trust in him, who is the savior of all men, especially for those who believe. These things command and teach. And that's what I'm doing. I'm teaching you. I'm commanding you. I'm not asking you. Here, Paul is not asking Timothy. He's commanding Timothy. This is how you're to live your life. You're a leader. You're a husband, you're a father. You're to be the example for them. But we're waiting for our wives to step up. We're talking to men. Can I get an amen? amen. We're to do that. And you teach your children. This is how we live our lives. We're Christians. Honey, this is what I do. I go to church. You can come anytime you like. You know, and you invite her, invite her every, every Sunday, every Thursday. I'm going to Bible study. Would you like to go? Instead of making excuses. And right here. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word. Don't just preach at them. Live the word. Can I get an amen? He says in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, 
and purity of a heart and purity of a mind. This is what we're to be. We're be, to be examples of the living word here in this Church of Turning Point Fellowship and wherever you guys fellowship at. You're to live a clean life, a holy life, a truthful life, a life of integrity. Forget all the joy. I was kidding. No, you weren't because it came out of your house. It came from your mouth to your, out of your mouth. From your heart, it came out of your mouth. When I was chunkier, I weighed about 30 pounds more than I do now. But I remember people would walk up to me and say, hey, Pastor, gain some weight there. I said, kiss me before you insult me, my brother. That's what I would tell them. I said, why are you going to insult me, brother, instead of just saying I look good, you know, whatever it may be. It's good to see you, Pastor. That's how we should be. We should be encouraging one another, building one another. When they walk in, you should be the first one to say, good to see you, my brother. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad that we see each other. I, I said that to someone earlier today or yesterday. I said, it's good to see you. And he said, it's good to be seen. It is. It's good when you recognize people. And if you, if you don't know their name, if you can't remember their name, you don't know their name. Then you go tell them. Hey, I'm Angel Brother. What was your name again? Fred Mancina. Fred Mancina, right on. Fred, yeah, yeah, thank you. I'll remember that. There's no shame in that. He sees the humility, the humbleness of a man. And I'm not trying to think I'm somebody. I'm not, you know, I, I forgot your name, brother. Excuse me, pardon me. So you humble yourself before one another. That's how it should be. And sometimes I do ask you guys, the people that are around me, like, help me out, my brothers, when I'm here, you know. You, you hear me say, brother, say his name, you know. Hey, Jerry, what's going on, Jerry? You can say, okay, I know his name now. Amen. Wisdom. <laughs> people sharper than you, right? You don't know the names, you know. I'll be walking like, what's their names? You know, and, and, and they'll say. You know, you guys got to remember your, your little circle. I got to remember all the circles. Right? right? Verse 12. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the brothers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attention to reading, and uh, to exhortation, and to doctrine. Do not Neglect the gift that is given in you that was given to you by the prophecy which laying of hands and the eldership. God has laid hands. People have laid hands on you. They prophesied over you. They've given you a word of knowledge. And you forget it. And you stop working in it. You stop living in it. When they were telling me that the mantle that was on, the mantle that was on my life Took like 11 years to get there. And I wasn't even thinking about it. I was living my life. I was happy I was saved. I was happy I was sober, Tony. I was messed up. I was grateful. And God just, you just start walking with God. He's going to lead you right exactly where you want. You ain't got to go try to hustle it or what we used to do in the world and stuff like that, right? Amen. You're going to walk right into it if that's what God has for you. So let's try to make it happen. No, we're to cooperate with the Spirit of God. And he's going to lead you. He's ordered your steps. He's going to guide you by the truth. He's not going to sugarcoat your, your wanting. He's going to tell you, this is not for you. And it's hard. I've had to tell pastors that told me they were pastors. And by the discernment of the Spirit of God, I said, brother, you're, you're not called to be a pastor. And one said, oh, like you know it. I said, you asked me a question, I answered it. Do whatever you want to do with what I told you. Two, three years later, he was committing adultery behind the pulpit with, with his a girlfriend at the church. And, her, and his wife was having an affair with somebody in the church. So the pastor, he was sitting in there said, you're sitting down. 
And he didn't even want to listen to that pastor because he wanted the power. He loved the power. He loved the, uh, 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 yeah, uh, yeah, the title. People get lost up in all that. So that position. And this pastor said, you sit down for a year and then we'll talk about it, you know, when it's going to be time. They can't even wait a year because they want that power. They felt the power, the goodness of God. It's God's power. It's God's anointing. It's not ours. It's his. It's his teaching. It's his wisdom. And if you're not, you're not obeying God, I'm not going to use you. I cannot use you. The call was there. I'm not going to regret not calling you because I have work for you. But you're going to do whatever you're going to do, do it. That's what he told Judas, right? Do whatever you're going to do. You were made for this. You're the son of damnation. You were born to be damned. That's a heavy saying. And there's people like that. They're evil. They're dark. And you try, try to rap to them. I was talking to two young men this on harvest night. And one of them was hard-headed. And he was all messed up, twisted and everything. And I said, you know why you're like you are, right? I said, you understand what I'm saying to you? Because I knew him. It's because you disobeyed God. And you wanted to do what you wanted to do. This is your result. I'm sorry, Pastor. Not to me. To God. I said, I'm going to pray with you, brother. I'm going to pray that God breaks that. And Satan won't have nothing more to do with you. Because that's who's working in you right now. That's why I say, you know, on Harvest Night, you guys got to come. There's, there's a lot of work to be done. I got to talk to four people and minister to them. And I believe for them. I may not ever see them again. And I tell someone that. Hey, brother, I may not ever see you again, but one day I know we're going to see each other in heaven. And that's how we live faith, by faith. Verse 14, I'll finish up right here with 16. It says, do not neglect the gift that is in you. There's gifts in you. There's talents in you which was given to you by the prophecy and the laying of hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself partly to them. No? No? What does it say? Exactly right. I just want to see if you guys are paying attention. Some of you said amen. Power. <laughs> Meditate on those things. Give yourself entirely to them. That you may progress. <clears throat> progress may be evident to all. The people see your life, that you're growing up in the things of God. They see the goodness of God, the change of God, the things have happened. This young man, Eric, right here, people, I don't, I don't tell them. People come up and say, hey, Brother Eric's changed a lot, huh? My God. He's different now. Well, that's what the Spirit of God does. That's the power of the Word of God should do that to us. So change our minds, change our hearts, change our words, the way we speak. We can't be telling the same dirty jokes. We shouldn't be doing that no more. We shouldn't even be listening to those. Not, well, excuse me. I walked away from many people like that when I worked. I worked in outside cells. Now people got some dirty jokes. Yeah, bro, I don't need to hear it, right? And then other people say, Angel's a man of the cloth. Oh, you can't be telling those kind of jokes. Because they witness for you. Because you live your life right before God. We're not bragging or boasting or nothing like that. But that's what the Bible's saying, right? That the word would be evident in your life. And that evidence now is coming out of your mouth and through your heart to give to people that they could be richer. And I'm not talking about money. Rich in wisdom, wisdom and joy, uh, rich in joy and faithfulness, loyal. That's what the body of Christ is lacking. Loyalty. To be loyal to the call that God has called us. 
I don't feel like I no tengo ganas, no quiero ir. Who, who's asking you? God is like, who's asking you that? I'm telling you what I command, what I'm telling you to do. And that's why we get richer because we say, yes, Father, like a child. Doesn't it feel good like when uh, 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 Ivan listens to you and he does it? feels good. Oh, man, my, my son is growing up. He's learning. And the other two are like, whatever. <laughs> right? At times, right? We have, to, we have to grow. And he's growing. He's maturing. He's full of integrity, Tomas. That young man is full of integrity, full of honor. I was with him yesterday at the football game. And now that brother just comes like here like he's my armor bearer. <laughs> he stands right there, you know. So what's going on, you know? Nothing. Just hang out next to you. I said, okay, praise God. Serious. It is. It's beautiful. No one told him what to do. He was trained by his pops, by his mom, by the word of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And he's living a life now. He ain't a little boy. Yeah, he's only, what, 14, 15? Yeah. But there's some 15-year-olds that are more mature than 21-year-olds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he said more than some 40-year-old men, you know. Meditate on the things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress, your progress, your progress, your progress may be evident to all. Don't look at other people's progress. Look at your own progress. Check the mirror out. Take heed to yourself. Whew, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Amen. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine, to the teaching which you've been sitting under. Continue in them. For in doing this, you will save both yourselves and those who hear you. Can I get an amen? That's what we're to do. I didn't even get to my notes. That just was my opening. <laughs> I'm going to ask you this. If, and I want you guys to read these scriptures. I have two scriptures. 1 Timothy 4 through 6. 6 through 12, I'm sorry. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 12. That's what we read right now. Emphasizing 1 Timothy 4.12, let no one despise your youth, but set the, believers and his, uh, uh, set the believers as an example in speech. We're to be the examples of how we talk, how we conduct ourselves, our lifestyle, the love that we have for one another. People should know you by your love. You guys don't even know how you guys bless me when... Uh, uh, Fernando give a, uh, did a video right there, right? Uh, Describe Pastor Angel with one word. 80% of it was loving. I was crying. I'm like, what the heck? I'm loving? Serious. I'm like, I'm loving? And there was someone that said he was not, he's knowledgeable. Others other said he's strong. Others say he's a servant. Which, what I kept hearing is love, compassion. I'm like, wow. It is mind-blowing. For a knucklehead like this, man, it was a blessing. They're like, you guys charge me up. You guys, like, wow. I said, they love me. So, now what a trip. And that's how we should be for other people. These people should recognize that you're a lover of God. You love the word. You study the word. You meditate upon the word. You have compassion for people. You understand people. You understand when, where they're coming from because you came from there. If that's the type of person you're talking to. You know where they've been at. You may not the same road, but they were real close to it, Right? <laughs> right? And God begins to change our life. And the people that are hearing you, that's what the Bible says. The people that are around you are hearing it. Your daughters, your daughters, brother, you've done a great job, honestly. A great job with those three young ladies. I was honored that they asked me to go on the football field with them. I'm like, what the heck? Why? Who am I to go on a football field with this little cheerleader, you know? Because at times you look at her like she's not even interested, right? You know, I want my pastor to be up there with me. 
I said, oh, my God. That's mind-blowing. Don't even get on to that from adults. Kids, 16-year-old, 17-year-old. How old is she, 16, 17? Giving you honor. I want my pastor there. I want my grandparents there. I want my, my Nino Nina there. And I want my pastor there. <laughs> exactly. Like, what the heck? That is a trip. And I wrote her a note. Thank you very much. So, so, so honorable what you said and what you've done. I said, I had no thought. I had no think, you know, no thought of that. That, that you honored me. It's mind-blowing that when we begin to live this life that Christ has given to Timothy through Paul, that people begin to recognize your life. Not because you're wearing a Viking jersey, all right, you Because you're wearing Christ. I'm clothed in Christ. I'm clothed in his spirit. I'm clothed in his wisdom, his knowledge. That's what I am. And that's who we are. And that's what I try to teach you here. I don't try to teach you that. It's up to you to, to receive that and walk in that. I can't make you. I cannot force you to be a Christian. I can't save you. I can give you the word. The word says that we're to save one another, right? Doesn't it say that? Save those that are fallen, those that are, you know, we're to do that. But we know that all salvation comes from what Jesus Christ did on that cross. And that's what I want to encourage you guys. We're going up to the mountain. It's like in two weeks. Fired up, right? Men are fired up. They're excited. It's time to engage, guys. Start right now. Get excited right now. I used to get excited two, three days before up there. Serious. I'm like, I'm not excited. They were like, are you excited, Pastor? Mm, well, all right. You yeah. know? But once, the, once you get up there and the Holy Ghost hits you and the anointing hits you, like, boom, fire. I'm ready to do whatever the Lord asks me to do. And we're ready now. We're priming that carburetor, right? We're dropping a little gas in it. Boom, boom, boom. We're warming it all up. Baby, when we get there, we, we don't need one song. We're ready, baby. Come on. Come on, sing. Praise that song, brother. Come on, let's worship. In the cafeteria, you go, hey, brother, I haven't seen you for a year. Praise the Lord. You're hugging on them. You're loving on them. They're, they're feeling the love, the excitement that God has given you. And some of you guys that aren't exciting type people, get out of yourself. Because, oh, I'm shy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So why are you eating that last rib? You know, if you're shy, don't leave that for somebody else. Mm -mm, I'm eating it, right, Steve? <laughs> Back in the day, I'm eating that rib, you know? So I just want to encourage you guys with this word today. Stay connected. We're going to the next level of engaging now. We're not just going to hit and miss no more. We're plugging that sucker in. That light's going to come on, and we're going to walk in the light now. Can I get an amen? Amen. Let's all stand. Give the Lord a praise offering. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I encourage you guys to invite friends. Imagine if you bring a friend. Imagine if you bring a friend. You know? Imagine you bring a friend next, next month. Instead of having 25, 30 men here, we're going to have 50, 60 men. You know, hey, brother, I just, you know, I've been inviting you. Brother, come on, man, what's up? You know, I messed up. So what? Who isn't? God is straightening us out. What's, what's rough in your life, he smooths it out. What's crooked in your life, he straightens it out. We just got to let him do that. Don't let the enemy take your mind. You've blown it too many times. <laughs> 70 times 7. Every minute. Just constantly forgiving. Forgive yourself too. You got to learn to forgive yourself. Because you're your some of us are our worst enemies. We can beat ourselves up better than anybody. You got to stop that because that's a 
That's a ploy of the enemy. That's a ploy of the enemy. No more. No more. I have the mind of Christ. I choose to think on what is noble, what is right, what is good, what is just, what is holy. You have the power to do that. Imagine that. You can change your mind. What did David do? He stirred himself up when they wanted to stone him and kill him. He didn't say, okay, go ahead and kill me, beat me up. I messed up. No. Let me get by myself. Let me stir myself up. And that's what we have to do. On the way to that mountain, stir yourself up. If you pray in tongues, pray in tongues. If you have the spirit of, uh, of, the, of uh, speaking in tongues, practice that. Use that. Operate in that. Every day I do that. Every day I'm praying in tongues. Every day of my life. You know, I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for myself to stir myself up. And some of you just don't believe it. You just don't believe in tongues. You say you do, but you don't. Because that gift is for you. Not everybody's going to get it. I know that. But let it be the Baptist church down the street. Let it be that Lutheran church down the street that don't operate in, in gifts and talents of God. Let that be them. But not us, Turning Point Fellowship. I want it all. Stevie, I want everything that God has for me. I want it all. When I was out there in the world, I wanted, I wanted to be the gangster, the thug. I want all that Jesus has for me. That's what I want. Amen? You got to tell yourself, that's what I want. There it is right there. 200 bucks, man. If you come that day, have 200 bucks in your pocket. Don't, don't ask pastor for any... Uh, Leanies, you know, we've been saying this for 10, 11 months already. Pastor, I got 100 bucks. Well, go buy yourself a dinner down the, down the road, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't do that, but my men will. They're tougher than me on that, right? I got three men that are around me now. Like, don't talk to Pastor. Come talk to me, you know. And they, they got the books good. I was in the hole for like... $1,000 or something, you know, because everyone's going to pay me later, you know. And no one's paying me later. <laughs> so I said, they got it. Yeah, we got it, Pastor. Don't worry about it. So they're paying. And if you can't come, give it to somebody else. Buy that ticket for somebody else. Yeah, you know I, mean? I got 200 bucks, man, here. Hey, brother, I'm not going, but give it to somebody. Because people are going to come the last minute. It's always last minute people. we about six, eight of them. I see them walk in. I said, here they come. You know? And yeah, but praise God, they come. Yeah. You know? And before I would do uh, little, what's it called? I forget the word. But, you know, I would do little things with them, you know, that say, okay, give me 50, give me 50, give me the 150 in two weeks, you know, things like that. Yeah, make a deal. I'm like, not now. It's up to them. But you can come. You you may, you may not get the T-shirt that was part of everything, but we have, we're going to have T-shirts on the side. You know, they're 20 bucks, uh, 20 bucks, 20 bucks a pop. And they're good T-shirts. They got not long sleeves, just short sleeve, right? Short sleeve, guys. So they're nice. They're nice. I, I, I like that. We're getting away from the black and the blue, you know, in a little color now. Praise be to God. <laughs> Father, I thank you and I bless you. I thank you for your word, the word that is the seed of life that has been dropped, deposited into good ground, the hearts and the souls of your men. I pray, Father, that, that, may, that they be not just hearers, but they be doers, that they would apply this word to their lives, that they would reread re what they heard today, Lord God, and they say, I received this, I want this, Give it to me, Lord. So I thank you and I bless you, Father, for their comings and their goings. I thank you for the goodness and the mercy that follows them all the days of their lives. I thank you for on the drive home, Father, that we'll have a, a safe drive to and from. And I pray for this food we're about to receive, for the provision you have given us again, Lord. You always provide, Lord. I say that this food will be good, nourishing to our souls and to our bodies, Lord God. 
So we thank you and we bless you for this time, for this moment. Let it be marked in heaven and let it be marked here on earth upon us right now. In Jesus' name. And all of us said, amen. amen. Hallelujah. We're going to take a picture. <coughs> Guys, we're going to take a picture right here on the, on the, on the steps. Want to help me out right here?